there are people right now that don't have a restaurant that are dreaming about it, mm-hmm. and you're you're giving them the nuggets that they need and uh, providing them the direction. And you know that that is what makes this this country so great. Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast, People Bring Profit. So excited to be here. Uh, I'm Chris Alexa, CEO and founder of our little company here. Super excited to be here. Thank you for tuning in today. Got an exciting show over here. You can see I got a guest over here, our mayor from Beaumont, Roy West, right there. Yes, How you doing, Mayor? Yes. I'm doing awesome. It's a privilege to be here today. Well, we're, we're excited to have you and pick your brains. When this opportunity came to us, we uh, were excited about it because we would love to sit with somebody like you and get some questions answered and hear from you, too. So, But today, but today beside me, I got my sidekick over here. Who do we got over yeah, here? Yeah, Kimberly Alexa. I serve as the chief financial officer for Aspire to Be, one of the founders. There you go. Nice. Justin Smith. I run operations. COO, Aspire to Be Hospitality. But again, guys, I want to tell you right now, um, if you love this, what we're doing, and excited about what we're doing, please go hit the like button, share, subscribe, all the all the above. Uh, we are breaking out, getting bigger in every day. We're practicing this every day and trying to really hone our talents on here to share our stuff and our nuggets that we're out here doing today. So I want to kind of start this out and start some questions here um, and see what we got. I think Justin's up with first question. Yeah, so I uh, moved here five years ago to Southeast Texas and just kind of saw what Southern hospitality and and specifically, I live in Lumberton, um, how important restaurants are. So I wanted to ask, just in the city of Beaumont, how much do restaurants and hospitality contribute to the economy, and how important it is to you, the restaurants that are operating in your city? Well, my wife doesn't cook much, so let me, let me, just <laughs> start, with, let me start with that. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I love her dearly, and uh, so I, I have no complaints. She will cook when she needs to. But no, obviously, you know, it, it is a vital part of our community, and it's a very competitive market here in Beaumont because, you know, we have 110,000 people a day or vehicles a day travel through Beaumont on Interstate 10 on an average day. That's an incredible number, and it's an incredible blessing for this community. We have so many things in this community, and sometimes I'll go down rabbit trails, but I want to bring up, you know, like Interstate 10. We're going to be, they're going to be spending almost a billion dollars on Interstate 10 in Beaumont in the next seven to 10 years on this uh, freeway expansion. Yeah. And it's going to be, it's going to be challenging at times, but progress can be painful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, but it is something that certainly uh, will, will, will benefit from, but our children and grandchildren will certainly benefit more from because you've got to be pouring in into infrastructure. And so with that, we don't, Restaurants don't just service Beaumont. I mean, we have 300,000 in our MSA, which is surrounding communities. You mentioned there's a lot of bedroom communities, if you will, that come into Beaumont every day. And a lot of people eat in Beaumont. Mm -hmm. And then you have all the uh, traffic from Interstate 10. And so it is a very, uh, it should be a very attractive community to have restaurants in because uh, in terms of we have relatively easy access on and off the freeways compared to other cities, and uh, we're still that, you know, not too large. And so you can, and you can advertise and you can get to people easily off the freeway if you want to. And so restaurants are very important, and working mm-hmm. with them and attracting them is certainly uh, always important for cities to be mindful of. Cool. Yeah. yeah. So as you, you know, you mentioned restaurants are important, but so as a mayor, are you kept brief on like city, I mean, um, small business success and then small business failures that are going on in the city? And then with the failures, are you put on the track of offering like incentives or programs or tax abatements or whatever it may be to encourage economic development? We, or Beaumont? We do, we do have some eco- economic development tools. Now, okay. The one thing that I've learned, you know, you know, you just know what you know when you get here, and you start learning a whole lot. Oh yeah. So, uh, in terms of incentives that you offer, uh, you know, if you start offering new incentives, and we do have some for the downtown area, and I can get into that. For when you have existing businesses, then businesses say, "Well, look, we didn't do that, and we're here." 
you know, and you're yeah. going to help this guy open up next door yeah. to me and compete against me, <laughs> and you're going to you're yeah. going to put money in his point. pocket. <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. What? Why? What's up with this? So we want to keep a level playing field, but we do want to make it where we can help people get to a yes. The challenges we have here in Beaumont, they're not unique to Beaumont. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what's cool also, mm -hmm. is it's not like we have to reinvent the wheel on anything. All we do need to do is look at cities that are doing it better. Yeah. And incrementally make uh, improvements. And, uh, and I think one way to do that is to help businesses find that yes. And then with, with areas where we do have uh, uh, incentives, it's where we lack business, which yeah. is downtown. So then it's like we'll help any business get downtown, but when you're but when you are competing like just in neighborhoods and stuff, yeah. we have to be careful. I agree that. with that, yeah. Roy. I think 100 percent on that incentive package for downtown. So I love that about you. I got a question though. So as the mayor of Beaumont, you got your city council and you got all the people, the city manager. I guess right. that city manager sits underneath you, I guess. And so when you're going through like zoning and permitting and we got issues, right? I, we brought this off key, right, right off the, the show before the show started. That in, in some counties it's it's hard it is so hard to get permitting where we're planning out kim and all of our team are working on leases new property and we tell the landlord we need 160 days not a hunt not 90 and they're like no way no no it's taking us that long to get permitting we're 12 weeks out before they even look at our permit or right. look at our plans and they're like no way we're gonna hold you this and we have to like if not we start paying rent so we have to negotiate that a year ahead of this time so how how in tune is the mayor to those problems well, that can probably vary by city, yeah. but I would expect that uh, a mayor that is engaged in their community is going to know that because, and, and I, I've learned a lot, as I've said throughout this process, but, you know, everybody, whether it's uh, fire inspections, electrical inspections, plumbing inspections, the framing inspections, all the different inspections, you know, we've done customer service training since we've been just in the short time that I've been here. And, and it wasn't just because of me. It was because our city manager, our council understood that, you know, it's how you say things. Oftentimes, people don't understand where challenges lie. And if you can explain those. And at the city of Beaumont, if you if you have a project, you can go in on uh, Thursdays every week. You can go and you can go to our planning and zoning. You can sit down with them. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, and you can lay out, they can tell, they can help you walk through that process. Obviously, the more elaborate that process is, the longer that walkthrough is, and you're going to have others involved in that with you. But we want to help people learn how to get point a, from point A to point B. We don't want to be a place, just like in my business life, you know, uh, I, I came from the mortgage business. You say no a lot. Yeah. But I want to be able to get people to a yes. Yeah. So that w that's one of those things, a part of our culture, part of our team is you don't just tell people, no, you don't qualify, bye. Yeah. Is life's going to keep happening. Time's going to keep happening. And, uh, you know, the number of deals we do two years from now is going to determine the income I'm making two years from now, not the deals I'm doing now. You know, so, so helping people understand how they can get to a yes where their challenges are from the perspective that you have from your role and and from a city's you know we we need to manage our departments well we need to make sure that we have enough employees that people don't have long wait times for inspections and when they do we need to work to remedy that and then we need to keep people informed of it i mean i'm a big believer in you know warts and all you know let's be honest from the beginning and you know sometimes people get upset with the truth yeah but the truth the truth yeah yes. that's right yes. yeah that's you know. right and it stands yes. it does yes absolutely i love it i love Good. it that's justin really what good. you got over there man yeah, and I, I think we've, we're ready for this question. So we have what's called like the voice of the guest at, at our Buffalo Wild Wings. So we get all these surveys. We focus on ones and turning them into fives, a poor experience and turning that into a loyal guest. And we get all this information and we make these informed business decisions. What's the, like the Roy West, mayor of Beaumont, voice of the guest? Like how do you take in all of these good and bad things that are coming out of Beaumont? And like how did that, how does that even work for a mayor? You know, I... I listen because yeah. I realize that uh, 
for us to be better, you do have to hear what people are saying, even if I think it's nonsense. Mm -hmm. And uh, because then it may not be, or some cases it is. And but how how we do better is going to be the key. And and also, I believe it matters what I model mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's for true. for the yeah. city employees. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, Beaumont has we have big. We have big dreams. We have big visions. We've started laying those out there. And I think that's also important to be able to do, much like business does, is, you know, if you're going to get from point A to point B, you got to know where point B is. That's, that's right. right. And yep. you got to know what it looks like. That's and right. then you got to know how you're going to get there. You got to map it. Yeah. And, uh, and I think historically, Beaumont as a city hadn't done that real well. And I'm not blaming it on any one person because I don't think it's one person's fault. I think it's, there hadn't been a desire from the city. I think what has happened in recent years is we have grown to understand as a community that Beaumont quite literally could die. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think for a long time we thought organically things would just happen mm -hmm. and downtown could flourish. Mm -hmm. And now there's just the reality that it's that's not going to happen and that we as a city need to take leadership in that. And, and provide some direction, provide assistance with, this, with the community's input, with the residents' input, all the way down to votes by the public. We're not planning on making big decisions without that item being voted yep. on by the, by the public, which is a bit risky because then you got to – you got to do some marketing. You I'm so glad up. you're yeah. saying that. A lot man. of wisdom wrapped up in that. I'll tell you answer. what, that was, a, that was a good answer. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad yeah. you said that, too, because we, we get so mad. I bang my head that we vote these, you know, state representatives and these, you know, senators in, and it's, it's now what they want. It's not what they're voting public wants or it's what the pocket butts want the big donors want right. so and, and Roy, i was take a uh, say this too i do see you in the community man you're everywhere yeah. i don't know how you do it and so with all of your learning and and all of that goes on you know within the city is m my curiosity started to spark as far as ai right, right. so um, oh, we love just in AI. our business and and really we've just started to embrace that within the last what six really six months, months? Yeah. yeah so Chris and I talk at night, like, how can we make our businesses more efficient using AI? Is Does that ever come up in the city? Yes. And matter of fact, I just came from a U.S. Conference of Mayors in Washington, D.C., and I'd attended another conference that talked about that. Uh, you know, I would say city or governments as a whole are probably, you know, about 10 years behind uh Yes. You know, forward thinking <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. business and in, in er, in everything. So it's been really surprising that we even talk about it mm -hmm. in some ways. But, you know, uh, AI is just rapidly changing the world. It and is. and what that's going to look like for us is going to, we're going to have to be intentional about that. Yeah. Or otherwise it's going to get away from us. And, you yes. know, you, you know, in terms of, uh, all the different areas, but it's like so many other things, whether it's social media, the internet, and all those things. There are so many good things about it, but then there's so many bad things. And then how you manage that, how you govern that. As a city, we don't really have to govern it, but we sure want to. We want to pay attention to how other cities are utilizing it. And then, uh, you know, hearing from companies that are marketing to cities on how they can improve with uh, artificial intelligence. And that, and that really affects every department that you operate in. Yeah. You know, because uh, you don't know where you can't. Oftentimes, you don't know where you're lacking. That's right. But mm -hmm. ar artificial intelligence will reveal things to you just as simple as when you get on chat G PT or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, that's yeah. the one. And yeah. You, and, yeah. You know, and you type out something and you think, man, I just got like 50 times smarter. That's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> Except for this part right here. Yeah. This part right here. And this part right here. I gotta so do always research. make sure you're reading all those other parts in there. But it is incredible. Yeah, it, it is. is. It's a crazy thing. Yeah. We were picking about that with the city. Yeah. It's like one of the things you think about AI, my mind goes like the bus route. Right. Like your bus transportation department could put it in and say, this is the most efficient way to run your bus route. There's only so many passengers get on it at this time of the day. So why are we running that one to make it more efficient? And that's the biggest thing about AI, I think, in our business. We're not looking to like make it run our business. We're trying to make it make us run better and yeah. more efficient. You know, 
there's been talk at times, well, you know, we don't need these big buses. We don't need this or we don't need that. Well, the majority of that money comes from the federal government. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And if we don't have certain routes and we don't run them certain times, then we don't qualify for that money. Yeah. So it's not always what's most rational or reasonable. Yeah. It is if you're going to do this, and the solution is you're not going to do it otherwise because you don't have that money. I know at one point a council person said, well, you know, with all this money we're spending, you know, we could, it could be a lot better use if we just gave vouchers out for Ubers. You know, then, mm. it, but it's like, that ain't never happening because the government ain't giving us money for Uber. They ain't going to give that. <laughs> you know? So, uh, I mean, it, it, that may sound like a good idea, but there's yeah. just not, there, there are money for public transportation. I think all of those things are things that I think AI can keep helping us with, and I think maybe the federal government can pay attention to and sometimes, but it is even that ship really turns slow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I bet. And which is so scary because AI is going so fast. Fast. It is. Yep. And the government is turning so slow. It's 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 kind of scary. It is. But listen, I have so enjoyed talking with you. And I know that we're on a time schedule here, kind of. And Well, he's a busy man. You heard me. He's probably going yes. to his other meeting and after this, you know. Yeah, but I, I want to say, for the record, thank you. Thank yeah. you for just being with us as business leaders and just wrapping up, I have one more question. Do you have specific goals that you wanted to just make sure that you nail in this first term? Yes. And one of them is, uh, is, a, is an attitude towards Beaumont mm-hmm. and, and also presenting a vision. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a vision can change. But mm-hmm. you've, you've got to have a vision for the vision to change. When you have no vision, you're you're certainly not going to get anywhere. And I, I feel like in our short amount of time, we've made progress in all those areas. And now, you know, the hard work becomes making that vision become a reality and then making the adjustments where you need to. Right. And, uh, and, and it, it's, but it's a great opportunity because, you know, and all, even when you, if you end up passing the baton, all you've got to be doing every day when I wake up, I know I just have to serve one person. And, uh, and that is, I am a Christian. I love the That's Lord right. and I just need to serve him and be faithful to him. And I find I'm being, I'm being faithful to my constituents because you can't make everybody happy in all that you do. So you just need to know that you're, you're making the best decision you can based on the information you have without regard, whether it's going to make everybody happy and not being a career uh, politician nor having a desire to be a career politician that is going to continue to be my approach but i've also found that you know when you're honest with people and you show up and you hear i, I think it makes a big difference Amen. nice Amen. So cool, man. that is so awesome yeah that, that is, is so man cool. it, it, it it's man it's a uh, it was cool to have you on i tell yeah. you what it's it's exciting to see that you, you align kind of what with what we're doing right in a, in a vision of what we try to push out there the culture we're trying to change in and i'll tell you this beaumont has its ups and downs, right? But we're in many cities. We're in a ton of different cities, mm-hmm. and every city is the same way. And it's crazy. And you said this: the political scene has changed that, and it's the media that's changed that. It's driving people against each other, and we should all be for each other. It's because we compassion. Now, there's going to be some outliers, either or, whatever side you you choose to be on, in political rims or whatever. There's always troublemakers out there. But don't turn the good people against good people. Right. And I love what you said: a city should compete against another city. You don't have a team that fights internally. You have a team that wants to play and beat the other t- high school team. Right. Now, when you're fighting each other, you ain't never going to beat nobody. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So I, I love that uh, mindset that you have, Roy. Yeah. Uh, it's, so. been, it's been great. So. Um, I want to end it up here, though. Do you have anything you want to close up with? I mean, this is – I was shocked, though. When Kim told me you have a two-year campaign, I'm like, holy smokes, two, two years. Two so he, he, he new to it. He's drinking out of fire high. He's trying to catch up. He's trying to take a city council that's been – I don't know, throwing stuff, it seems like, at each other forever, you know, <laughs> and, and just arguments and not getting anything done. So he does this for the first year. You said, what, 25? How many days are you in so far? 250 days? 261 days. So then the next year, you got to start thinking about running again. Well, the good thing about a mayor's job is what I do every day is campaigning. Yeah. I mean, so it really, my day is not going to look any different in a year from now 
it, when I'm in a race, I'm going to keep doing what I do. I'm going to keep being in the community. I, I don't see it as a problem. I'm grateful for the opportunity, and, and I trust the system. You know, it, this is uh, – I'll be mayor as long as – well, I won't say as long as people want me to be mayor. I'm sure they'll <laughs> – but because yeah. I'm not – this isn't uh, – I had to negotiate with my wife for the first two years. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yep. th- this, so. this wasn't a lifelong ambition of mine to be mayor. But I want to – I just want to applaud y'all for this platform and for the work that y'all do and, and the vision that y'all can help others – that are getting started in business because there are people right now that don't have a restaurant that are dreaming about it. Mm -hmm. And you're, you're giving them the nuggets that they need and uh, providing them the direction. And you know, that, that is what makes this, this country so great. And you know, and it's funny when we talk about the homeless and I'll end on this because people, you know, we talk about the border crisis and all this, and I'm not getting political. But at the end of the day, what we're where everybody wants to be. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, people will leave everything they have behind, which may yes. be nothing, to come mm-hmm. here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's, that's pretty incredible. That's right. That we Absolutely. get to live in that place. Absolutely. Still the greatest country in the world. It is. Yes. I mean, when it yes. takes a lost soul like myself to find a beautiful woman like this, and God give me this opportunity to be on a platform like this and, and share our nuggets. It's 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 amazing place. We say that all the time. We're we're blessed to be here, and, and a lot of women beg to. So if you're here, enjoy it. I mean, because it's it's a nice place, you know. Um, so it, it it is cool, you know, Roy. You say that that we love to share this on our platform because it's people. We don't get paid for this, man. We just love sharing stuff. And I told Kim the other last night over dinner. I once knew a man that read a thousand business books, but never owned a business. So what we try to do is get you to the end of that thing. And if you read a 1,000 or one or none, push you off the shelf, right? Let's go. You can do it. It's not too late. So it's cool. But thank you, Roy. Thank, thank you for you having much. us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, being on this. And Beaumont, um, Scott, I will tell you, he's the hardest working mayor I see. Yes, I mean, you are out there absolutely. pounding the street. You're making people happy. Keep doing the good work, my friend. And God will bless you and your family for many, many years. Yep. Thank you. Uh, guys, thank you for joining our podcast. We hope you got some stuff out here. Got to agree to awesome mayor and learn a little bit about us. And thank yeah. you again. And yeah. thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Yes. All right.